Today, Square Enix wants you to pay for games by watching ads. But what is the real cost? This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint and happy Labor Day! Question about that, since it's white, do I have to stop wearing this shirt now? Yes. Damn it, I just washed it! What do you mean you just washed it? I mean I wash it every week after we're done. Steve Lysette, executive producer of Sonic and Sega All-Stars Transformed, you know, the one where Sonic drives a car, have said that they've been very impressed by the technology in the Wii U, that its processing capability is fine, the RAM is great, and it looks just as good as the other HD platforms out there. I should fucking hope so, because the Wii U isn't out yet and those other platforms are seven years old! The second Skyrim expansion comes out this week. Hearthfire lets players build and customize their own home in the game. Players will also be able to buy furnishings, adopt children, hire servants, and even realize they'd much rather be outside killing dragons. People Can Fly's 2004 FPS Painkiller is being remade by Nordic Games and The Farm 51 as Painkiller Hell and Damnation, which is... I mean, it's awesome, because Painkiller was awesome, but it wasn't the graphics that were awesome. It was pinning enemies to the wall with a state gun, or the gun that fired shurikens and lightning. It doesn't need better graphics. And if you were going to fix the graphics, why does he still have that forehead? Nexon, the Korean developer behind MapleStory and Cartwrighter, has just boasted an astonishing 3 million concurrent users logged into its hit game, Dungeon Fighter Online. I'll repeat that. 3 million people, the same population as Lithuania or downtown Chicago, logged in concurrently, which means at the same time. Now, by comparison, Gears of War 3 has only sold 3 million copies total. This is the new world record, and it beats the previous world record, which was also held by Dungeon Fighter Online. So clearly, the secret to making the world's most popular games isn't graphics or stories, it's 2.5D dungeons. It's Golden Axe. People just want Golden Axe. Square Enix is re-releasing its hit DS game The World Ends With You on iOS. In addition to having all new shiny retina graphics, Square Enix are also adding their standard iOS touches. The game won't be universal, and will cost a modest $17.99 on iPhone and $19.99 on iPad. Square Enix, single-handedly testing the limit of how much people will pay for an iOS game before they break out the torches and pitchforks. So brave. And in other Square Enix news, the company is getting into the streaming market with the launch of Core Online, a cloud-based service that lets people play console-quality games through browsers while the graphics hardware of the player's computer does the heavy lifting. That's cool and all, but what's actually interesting is how Squeenix plans to make money off this service. You can, of course, buy games and levels, but they're not really expecting everyone to break out their wallets. If you don't want to pay, you can trade your time for more gaming by watching ads. A 7 second Samsung ad will earn you a mere 5 minutes of gameplay, but a minute and a half long ad for a discount clothing store will get you almost 26 minutes. Presumably, if you watch a three-hour-long ad for Adult Incontinence products, you'll never need to watch another ad again, and Square Enix will send you a $17 check for the remainder of your dignity. Well, that's sort of the system we have. You watch a 30-second pre-roll ad, and then you get to see us. That doesn't seem like a very good deal. Shut up. Coming up. Peter Molyneux's game Curiosity is now called Curiosity colon What's Inside the Cube. I don't want to know what's inside the Curiosity colon. 